In this century, America has become a nation on wheels. We ride on wheels to work, to shop, to play. But when we depend on wheels, we depend also on highways. And therein lies the challenge. Congress responded with the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. The most talked about phase of the act is the interstate highway system. These new highways will have a far-reaching economic impact on the entire nation. They are a shot in the arm for cities that have begun to feel the impact of growing downtown traffic congestion. They open up vast new areas for suburban living, and they encourage industry to disperse out of city congestion. They were supposed to be roads to progress in the future. Built with promises of urban revitalization and suburban convenience, interstate highways invaded America's cities in the post-war boom years. But as these idols to asphalt went up, communities came down. The highways became dividers instead of uniters. Before the highways, cities were human scale, walkable, with smaller neighborhoods and personalities directly reflecting the people who lived there. There were corner stores, streetcars, bakeries, butchers, and window shopping at the Five and Dimes. Community was close, and commerce was local. For a half century since, downtowns were inaccessible and vacant. They were nothing more than decoration for interstate travelers passing through to somewhere else. Local businesses and people were cut off from each other, divided. Many neighborhoods not directly bulldozed to make room for the highways found themselves in a mini economic depression lasting decades. Many cities could not recover. Birmingham experienced these same transformations. In 1971, Interstate 2059 opened in downtown Birmingham, a barrier dividing the city in twain. Classic neighborhoods like Norwood, Fountain Heights, and Druid Hills were cut off from the rest of the city and are still separated from Birmingham's current downtown resurgence. This roadway has negatively affected downtown Birmingham and continues to do so. Eleven years ago, a study commissioned by the city of Birmingham clearly stated the detrimental effects of having this elevated roadway running right through the heart of the city. The 2004 City Center Master Plan highlighted that the vitality that was creeping back into downtown would be blocked from spilling over into the neighborhoods to the north if the elevated road continued to stand. This plan suggested the sinking the road in place, thus negating the divider. More recently, an alternate plan has been offered that would relocate the interstate entirely to the north of downtown along a commercial and industrial corridor. However, successive city leadership and the Alabama Department of Transportation have ignored these plans. Currently, ALDOT is planning to double down with an even more intrusive I-2059, widening the road to 10 lanes with additional on and off ramps constructed through the I-2059 and 65 interchange known locally as Malfunction Junction. If built, this new bridge will continue the division of the city for another half century, a decision we will live to regret. Changing Birmingham's downtown to make it more livable and more economically viable is not a pipe dream. This is very much in the realm of the possible. After all, other cities are tearing down or lowering their elevated highways and are reaping the rewards. From Boston to San Francisco, Dallas to Seattle, cities around the country have seen the light. Their efforts have had measurable improvements on the fabrics of their downtowns, with drastically improved property values, healthier and happier citizens, and billions of dollars in new investments. In Birmingham, we're no stranger to urban transformation either. The area that became Railroad Park was an urban nightmare for decades, a derelict, empty eyesore collecting dust and reinforcing the view that downtown Birmingham just wasn't worth the trouble. But now Railroad Park is a success story, the city's own green backyard complete with a full social calendar and hundreds of millions of dollars in investments in the surrounding area, from the new Regent Stadium to Good People Brewery, hundreds of new apartments, and the Powell Steam Plant Redevelopment Project. Why should we squander this rare opportunity to bring renewed vitality to the northern parts of our city? If we want to see the kind of Birmingham we dream of, one where citizens are healthy, empowered, and connected, then we must stand up and be counted. Our city leadership and ALDOT must be convinced that the current plan for I-2059 will not improve Birmingham. This plan continues to segregate community and suppress our future. Instead, we need a vision of a new Birmingham, one where unity and inclusiveness are the standard. Half a century ago, we were a city where barriers between people were being torn down. Now it's time to remove one more. <laughs>